Whether we see it or not, the natural world around us is constantly changing. Some changes are easy to see, such as the weather, seasons, plants growing, or the sun rising and setting. It's harder to see changes that happen over longer periods of time, such as landscape shifting, habitats decreasing or increasing, or the climate changing. But what happens to living things as the world around them changes? They adapt. Adaptations are physical structures or behaviors that an animal inherits from their parents to help them survive in their habitat. In this video, we will introduce adaptations by exploring what they are, what types of adaptations are found, and what function they help animals with. As environments shift and change, some adaptations might be better suited for that change. If an animal with a feature that is better suited for the changed habitat survives long enough to reproduce, then that will pass down to that animal's offspring. Offspring that inherited those features from their parents might have a better chance of surviving that changing environment and will then pass on those helpful features to their offspring. While this sounds simple, it's important to remember that these features happen over a long period of time. Think of a duck's webbed feet. What is a duck's habitat? Water. Ducks are adapted for living in aquatic habitats. Their webbed feet help them swim. However, ducks did not get their webbed feet overnight. It took thousands of years and many generations of parents passing down these tiny changes to their offspring for this big change to occur, their webbed feet. There are two main categories of adaptations, physical adaptations and behavioral adaptations. Physical adaptations are structures on an animal's body that help it survive such as a rabbit's large ears to help it hear its predator, or the wings on a bird that might help it fly. Now, behavioral adaptations are something that an animal does to help it survive, such as the rabbit running from a predator, or a bird migrating long distances. There are many common types of adaptation functions, or specific ways in which the adaptation helps the plant or animal survive. Common functions include helping an animal or plant move, eat, regulate its temperature, avoid predators, or have offspring. Now, let's think of an example of a physical adaptation and what function it might serve. Watch as this frog catches a cricket for lunch. What does he use to catch that cricket? If you noticed he launched his tongue out to catch the cricket, you're right. A frog's tongue is long and stretchy and its saliva sticks to the bugs like glue. This allows a frog to catch the food that they need to survive. This is an example of a physical adaptation, and the function is to help the frog eat or gain energy from its habitat. Now let's think of an example of a behavioral adaptation and what function it might serve. See this bird at the feeder? This bird just completed a long journey north to Nebraska. Do you know what it's called when birds or other animals travel long distances during different seasons? Migration. This bird migrates south for the winter to find food in warm temperatures. This is an example of a behavioral adaptation, and the function is to help the animal regulate its body temperature and find food. Now that we have a better understanding of adaptations and their functions, let's see one more example. Watch as these sandhill cranes gather around the Platte River in Nebraska. They have flown thousands of miles from their wintering grounds from even as far south as Mexico. As you watch them, think about how you might answer the following questions. What type of habitat do they live in? What physical adaptations do you notice? What behavioral adaptations do you notice? What function do these adaptations have in helping them survive? Great job brainstorming adaptations today, everyone. For complete answers to these questions, see the text below the video for more about adaptations on plants and animals in Nebraska, keep an eye out for more of our videos. And next time that you're outside, take time to observe the plants and the animals that are around you. From the bugs and the birds, the trees and the flowers, what adaptations do you notice? And what do you think those adaptations do to help those plants and animals survive?